Have you guys ever wondered how NASA writes space proof code? Well, apparently I did last night when I added this to my watch later. So uh, let's get into it. I've been it. told that the worst thing that can happen as a developer is to have your code crash in production. But what if your production environment is in space? A null pointer D reference or a use after free sends your satellite hurtling into the ether with no way to control it. That'd be to super avoid this, though. NASA has a set of rules centered around making their code easy to statically analyze. The rules I'm going to talk about are actually derived from a set of 10 rules that NASA has, referred to as the power of 10. The power Gerard of Holzman, 10. a developer for NASA at their Jet Propulsion Laboratory for Reliable Software, acknowledges that some of these rules are a little strict, but in scenarios that require extreme safety, he says the trade-off is worth it. NASA restricts their code to simple control flow constructs. This means that they do not use go-to statements or set jump or long jump. They also do not use recursion. Recursion, or a function that calls into itself, creates very hard to follow cyclic code control flow graphs. Recursive code can lead to runaway code, which can crash, especially in embedded systems. NASA gives all of its loops a fixed upper bound. Now, this may sound obvious, but there's actually a little more nuance in this rule. For example, when traversing a linked list, the end case of the linked list may just be hit a forward pointer whose value equals zero. But to prevent an edge case that leads to runaway code, NASA will always put a top limit of the amount of iterations that a linked list traversal will take. All loops are bound by a hard upper limit that is represented as an integer, not as this is so interesting how there's limits in place, but in typical environments like apps or like little servers or, or little bots and stuff for like Discord, uh, you just you just kind of let the code run. I've never had a anything I've ever made in the. Well, it's been ages since I've made anything. I'm not exactly super skilled, but uh, I'm a cybersecurity major now. It used to be comp sci, so I am gonna have to start like learning other languages, but. All I've really done is play with Python and JavaScript, and the most I've really done besides like game servers is, um, so obviously I have a little bit of plugin experience, including a little bit of Java, but mainly just JavaScript for my Discord bot that I used to run, or a few Discord bots I used to run. I've never, it's, it's, it's always just been something being not defined well properly, and that's leading to a crash, or re doing too many requests. That's, that's literally all that I've ever had an issue with. Obviously, nothing to do with, uh, with the, a, 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 a Mars rover or a Hubble telescope or other satellites or anything with the rockets strapped to it, but uh, <laughs> still interesting to me. You don't really put limits in place. It's a pointer end case. One of the most interesting rules is that NASA recommends that you do not use the heap at all. You exclusively use stack memory. The reason for this is a notable amount of memory bugs do come from the use of the heap and garbage collectors. These uh, systems yeah, cannot be that, proven yeah. by a static code analyzer. By limiting your code to only using stack memory and setting an upper bound on the amount of stack memory you can allocate, you can predict exactly how much memory your program is going to use. By not using the heap at all, you completely eliminate use after freeze and memory leaks. Can I, seems can I use pedantic, that on Discord? It actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. It takes the a lot of RAM when you have like thousands and thousands of commands running and being loaded constantly through your bot on like hundreds of servers. I, I think I was in a few hundred servers with like 70 to 100,000 users at most. Maybe it was more than that. I never went past a few hundred thousand. I, I, that's all I know. This after running a bot for like over a year to two years, um, which this bot probably doesn't work at all anymore because it does not have the new command system. It doesn't follow any of the new identifiers for like guilds or users or anything. And this is on like discord.js, like a super old version, maybe like 10 or 11, nine. I don't, I'm not sure. I think we're on 12 or 14 now. That's crazy. <laughs> I definitely want to bring my Discord bot back in the future. I have I have Discord bots and and game servers that I want to bring back in the future, and new projects. But I'll only be bringing that back once I'm a little bigger on on, on this platform, so I can get more of you guys to check them out and hopefully uh, make it so that they can sustain themselves financially. I I'm fine making stuff that like doesn't really make too much profit, um, as long as they sustain themselves on it. I'll have to put my own money into it. That's the major thing with Discord bots. 
it, it can use a lot of bandwidth and it can use a lot of uh memory that's the two major things i've noticed with those and if you need a database for it like if you have like a profile system an economy system pet system marriage system uh trading cards adoption uh bunch of different things all of this will like you're gonna need a lot of storage <laughs> like a lot and then you're gonna have to change your database structure once you get like a few hundred users and then you have to change it again long term when you have way too many people on it uh but yeah i think i used mysql database or something but i've heard mongodb is better or something i don't maybe i'm like spitting out random jargon like for that are completely different things pretty sure mysql has a database structure and then mongodb is also just database structure i don't know um i know like minecraft servers it's like better to use mongodb is what really works well depending on it that's another thing for game servers if you have game modes well first of all you need a database no matter what if you have any types of statistics um or if you want to make money at all or have any ranks you, you need a database structure that'll load very fast and efficiently and won't cause uh issues and that all needs to happen within like a millisecond or like within a second of a player logging in uh it's, it's very complicated sometimes making sure that all of that works no matter what a function should do one thing now the function may require multiple steps to do that thing but the function should only perform a single action to ensure this and to ensure that the code is readable nasa recommends that functions should be no longer than 60 lines or about the size of a piece of paper Writing your code this way ensures that someone else auditing your code can quickly and easily read a function and understand what that function does. It also ensures that your function is small enough and concise enough to be testable as a single unit. If your function is 400 lines and has several layers of nesting, it's often a sign that your code is poorly structured and not well thought through. That, that, that can be true. Um, I would imagine they'd have so many functions then for, for obviously the level of i don't even know what the, what the word is like uh, what they're doing uh with with these rovers and other things that there must be tens of thousands of functions at that point that you constantly have to loading it load in and out but i guess that does work better as long as the system itself isn't having issues i wonder how that works like system fallbacks on those rovers and stuff because i assume there still will be issues with system well i guess that's why they code in the specific ways to prevent system just frying itself but something nasa supports the idea of data hiding or declaring variables as they're used at the lowest scope possible again all these rules are centered in writing safe code and code that is statically testable by declaring variables at the lowest scope required you not only reduce the amount of code that can access those variables but you also reduce the amount of places that can go wrong when debugging why a variable has an erroneous value this next one seems obvious, but is actually a pretty common issue when I'm reading the code of junior developers. Check all of your return values for non-void functions. All of them. It's very easy to read the man page for a function and figure out what it does, but to ignore the return value section for a function that should always behave properly. For example, the function printf, which just prints to the screen, should never fail. And if it does, we really don't care. To make sure that the person auditing the code understands that the developer meant to ignore the return value, the power of 10 says that we should explicitly cast all return values that are ignored to a void type. If a non-void function's return value is not void, this means that the developer forgot to check the return value and should be brought up in a code review. NASA limits the use of the C preprocessor to file inclusions and very simple conditional macros. You know what I hate about uh, JavaScript? I like JavaScript more than uh, Python is the funny part. I just hate returns and semicolons. Oh, and zero with uh, symbols and Unicode. I don't know why they exist. It's awful. The reason for this is the power of 10 calls out the C preprocessor as a hidden code obfuscator that can destroy code clarity and befuddle many static code analyzers. The power of 10 specifically calls out conditional compilation or having flags that change your code at compile time. 
For example, if you have 10 different flags that can be changed at compile time, you essentially create two to the power of 10 compilation targets that need to be tested, exponentially increasing the testing requirement of your code. This makes the code hard to scale and hard to test. Another interesting rule by NASA is the restriction of pointer use. The power of 10 calls out pointers and says that they should not be able to be dereferenced more than one layer at a time. The pointer? reason for this is pointers are a tool that oh, are powerful, okay. but easy to use incorrectly. By limiting your pointers to one dereference at a time, it forces you to create structures that properly track your pointers. Also, NASA says to limit the use of function pointers at all. Function pointers obfuscate the code control flow graph of your program and make it very hard to statically analyze and fully test. And finally, when compiling your code, compile with all warnings enabled and compile in pedantic mode. Doing this ensures that every possible problem the compiler sees with your code will be raised and treated as an error. After this, make sure your code is analyzed using multiple static code analyzers with different rule sets and that your code is unit tested. Now, before you launch your new safely coded rocket into space, go how Google writes future-proof code, code like Google, I test the ChatGPT's hacking skills, scary results. Why do they always use the fox mask? I get the whole anonymous thing, but it's just, it's so funny to be seeing the fox mask, especially if you watch the movie. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, honestly, probably a major reason why code nowadays is like, so prone to errors or crashing is just the fact that we don't exactly teach or learn to to be very precautious with the code and just kind of let it run i mean hardware can handle it that's like a major thing though with hardware constantly advancing and the thing is i believe we're we're starting to reach the limits of what's possible um at our current level of of silicon manufacturing uh for the power of computers but a major problem is that we have such powerful hardware that's so easily accessible for the average person. Like the average person has access to pretty powerful hardware compared to a decade or two decades ago where code can just run. Like we don't really have a problem with it, which is a major issue for sure. I think the biggest issue I've, I've seen though is memory leaks. Memory leaks are awful. Like it can even be a game that's having memory leak. Oh yeah, I've had games that I've had to get memory leaks. My biggest thing though is, um, java minecraft servers my god <laughs> i've had so many memory leaks on them because um i don't explicitly set up like a partition or like a small limit or amount of memory aside for it i just let it run up to a certain limit and then for some reason it just i don't know I, maybe i just don't set the the arguments or whatever it's called uh, correctly and it, it just causes so many issues anyways thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to comment like subscribe turn on notifications so you guys never miss a video and uh check out my website with all my socials and my other channels in the description below along with my um my live streams that's tastyguava.com slash live streams i have all my platforms on there uh and my discord anyways thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one bye bye <laughs>